I've been working on a video on how much trouble Disney is actually in, and that might shock you, but something happened this week that we have to take a moment to stop and talk about. I wondered where those went. Okay, let's get ready for a wild ride here. This is at the Indiana Jones 5 Dial of Destiny premiere a few nights ago in Hollywood, California. The directors invited all the cast on stage, and I'm going to let this play out once so you can see what's going on, and then we're going to go back over a very important kind of detail that happens. You see, because there are two things that are going to be happening here. One, the audience doesn't know about. The other, Kathleen Kennedy doesn't know about. We're going to let this play out so you can get a sense of what's going on. First, we have all the cast on stage, and then the director asks everyone to sit down, but not Harrison. Not Harrison. Not Harrison, because he is part of the surprise. Both surprises, really. Okay, one, one last thing. There are three indispensable people without whom none of us would be here tonight, and that starts with the person who created Indiana Jones, George Lucas. The person who is Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. And the person who is the glue to all five of these films that gave us all of our rhythm and all of our melody, the great maestro, John Williams. So that was surprise number two, and oh my god, how incredible would that be? It's amazing enough that you're at a premiere of an Indiana Jones film, but oh, John Williams and his whole orchestra is hiding behind the screen, and they're going to bust out a couple tunes for you too. I mean, absolutely amazing. But you might have missed surprise number one. Let's review Kathleen Kennedy. So Spielberg gives props to George Lucas. He gives props to Harrison, and then he starts talking about the glue. And I would love to get a body language expert involved in this, because look at her body language. She's like getting all girded up. She's got her hands out in front of her. She's like getting a little, there, there's some pride going on here. But then it goes sideways, and he's not talking about her. And she's so taken off guard, she doesn't even think to clap for John Williams. It like takes her a moment to put her face back on. Her husband, Frank Marshall, on the left of her, to our left, he's kind of aware of what just happened, and he's trying to immediately steer her off the, the stage. But she's not having any of it, but she wants to make sure George is off that stage too, so she immediately starts dragging him off. Can you imagine, though? I mean, why was she even on the stage? I mean, Spielberg didn't mention her at all, but we also kind of have always known how Spielberg has felt about her. I remember Kathy came into the room with her steno pad and her pencil, and she was horrible at taking notes, and she was terrible, and she didn't really know how to do it very well. But what she did know how to do was interrupt somebody in mid-sentence. We'd be pitching ideas back and forth, and Kathy, who's supposed to be writing his ideas down, suddenly put her pencil down and would say something like, and what if he didn't get the girl, but instead he got the dog? And that was a phone interview from a long time ago. So she's always been this kind of way. Now she's in a place where she's driven all of Lucasfilm's IPs into the ground. And she's on the brink of getting ice. In a big bad way. But it seems like over the last few months that Bob Iger, the head of Disney, has been laying some groundwork to kind of minimize the damage when this action finally comes. Not only has she driven every IP in the ground, but... There have been various weird things that have happened that a movie studio wouldn't do. First off, there's the price of the movie, $300 million, and I don't think that even includes advertising. So we're talking Avatar money here. There is no way this is going to make Avatar money, especially with these early reviews, and that's another thing I'm going to get to in a moment. They've had to reshoot this movie multiple times because the original cut of the movie supposedly had... Because according to rumor, they had to reshoot the movie because apparently in the one of the original cuts of the movie, Phoebe Waller-Bridge uses the Dial of Destiny to essentially wipe Indiana Jones from history and all the things that he did accomplishment-wise, she did instead. Bob Iger saw this and said, no, you don't. You're going to reshoot this. Allegedly. 
Then there's been the behavior ever since the movie's release. Usually when a movie comes out and the studio kind of knows it's questionable or bad, they do things to kind of minimize the damage. Like they don't let the reviewers see the movie because they don't want the early reviews to get out or they don't send it to Cannes, but they sent it to Cannes. They sent it out to the reviewers, so th this is going to get as much air as possible. Anyway, it looks like he's really trying to expose her what she is, because the final straw is going to be the returns on Dial of Destiny, and there's no way this thing can recoup the billion dollars it essentially needs to make. I mean, it was made for Avatar money. It needs to make Avatar money in order to succeed, and that is not going to happen. Anyway, I'll get into that in the bigger video that I'm making about the problems that Disney's facing. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that one. And you'll see me in the doge soon, Johnny.